Oh, you are so ready for this. <laughs> Welcome to Cafe Lena. It's a joy to have you all here tonight. It's amazing to come up with some idea and see it come to life like this. It's really exciting and, and I appreciate you all participating in it. Um, this is a show that in, in a way we're kind of flying without a net tonight because it's not like we had elaborate dress rehearsals and it's not like people have been on tour all over the country and they're rolling in and doing what they're professionally trained to do. Um, you know what though, you are the net. You are the safety net because you're going to listen, you're gonna care, and you're gonna take in these songs and stories tonight and that's why you're here, so thank you. Um, <laughs> So, True Songs is all about uh, honoring our stories, uh, the, the story of friends and family and neighbors, the story of our community and of everyday courage and faith and healing. Um, each of the stories reflects the impact of a nonprofit organization that's in our area. Um, and our purpose is to show the work that those organizations do to kind of bring it to life. Um, many of those organizations are driven by volunteers, some of whom are in the room tonight. Um, it's to honor the resilience of the people that they serve and to show the power of songs to bring these stories home to our hearts. Um, so I just have to editorialize for one second because this is really why this show is so important to me. There's a lot out there on the news today um, and for the last few years that's been telling us that we're not great communities, that we don't get along, um, that we have a lot of problems. And it's, of course, true that we do. Um, what we're bringing into this room tonight, though, is a reminder of the level of care that so many people have um, for friends and neighbors and the way that they dedicate their lives to making their communities a little bit healthier in whatever way suits them. And I think that we need those reminders of people being well and caring for each other and getting along. So that's really what True Songs is about. So I'm going to bring up to the stage our first two performers. Um, we start tonight with Create Community Studios. Uh, this is an organization that provides an affordable, accessible space for people of all walks of life to come together and to make art. Um, they have a location right here in Saratoga and also one in Schenectady. Um, Janice Moses Anduna is here and she's going to be telling the story. Um, Janice has an amazing team that she has worked with. Uh, her songwriter is Girl Blue right here, um, who recently was honored with her fourth, I think fourth or fifth, fifth Thomas Edison Music Award in Eddie. Um, and Janice was coached by uh, uh, her on her storytelling by one of our region's best known storytellers and somebody who's very uh, familiar to our audience and that is Janine Laverty. So thank you for getting our night started. Testing, testing. Sometimes, sometimes I feel all by myself up here. That's just an opening. Um, one of the things I do to relax myself. Um, I am going to forget many of your people's names and somewhat of your faces. Um, don't get upset. <laughs> Unless you came in a Mitsubishi Eclipse. That's my favorite car. <laughs> um, so I want to tell you about Crewmate um, Community Studios. I actually started with them like a year and a half ago. Um, I was in a bad place. Um, I, let's just say when I do something, I do it big. <laughs> so I was in a bathroom stall at um, one of the Y's swimming and I actually had this bathing suit on and I was paralyzed, I was in the stall. I was paralyzed and I could not communicate to anyone. Um, so somebody asked me, do you need help? And I said yes. After that, I really don't remember what much. Um, I just remember 
just glancing to my right, my kids were waiting for me to pick them up. Um, and then I just was wheeled away, and four days later, uh, the doctor said, you have, four le you have 34 lesions on your brain. I think he said like four on my neck. By that time, I wasn't listening. Um, so he said, you know, you have MS and epilepsy. Um, so I was like, great. <laughs> Um, but after that, I really don't remember too much. I just remember going, doing scans, and my back hurting really <laughs> a lot. Um, so I was in a rough place for, I would say, six months. And then finally, I got in my depression. It was just like, okay, um, what are the things I'm good at? Art is one of them. And what's a great place that I can communicate to other people? Um, I was not, at first, willing to share with other people. Um, but my girlfriend, she said, you know, you should get your art out there. And so I looked up, you know, places where I can get my art to. And one of the places was Studio E, which is a, um, a program that is for people who have epilepsy. So I ended up participating in that. Um, then it turns out the executive, executive director was Ms. Heather Hutchinson there from Create Community Studios. And she made me write <laughs> some few things down and do some art. And of course, I didn't like following directions, so I went on my own, you know, with creating things. Um, but always different prompts and things like that. And I would cheat, you know. I, I did. Like, I would start something at home, and I was like, here you go. And it was like, oh, let me try to complete it more. Um, so here's one of the pieces I created. I'll give you a brief description on what I was thinking at the time. This is jail, um, and I felt like my, my brain was in jail, and I was in jail too, but I couldn't speak. So the hand represents me not being able to speak to anyone. Um, my eye is covered because sometimes with epilepsy, you can't see. Um, so I feel like the brain is going to do most of the talking, and I am going to be quiet um, because my brain is the one that does all everything, pretty much. Um, what you see around is different medications. Um, you'll see the purple and orange representing MS and epilepsy. I would say at first the MS was really the one that affected me the most. Um, at first, um, ability to speak, um, just different things, my coordination, um, Medication-wise, I mean, giving yourself injections three times a day, not exciting. Um, but I figured it out. I'm like, I don't want to look like a drug addict, so I'm just going to find places that I could do it. Finally, um, one of the medications I was on, I was like, listen, doctor, it's making me lose my hair. Um, he's like, well, that's not one of the side effects. I'm like, if I'm going like this and there's hair in the sink, that is a side effect. I'm like, nothing has changed. My hair products are the same. My food is the same. So this has to be it. Um, finally, I got off of that. Oh, and another thing is um, one of the strengths that I had was when I exercised, I could you know, push um, 120, 150 easily. I'm like, now it's like, uh, uh, okay, this is a struggle. That's a problem. So I said, my, you know, my limbs are weak. What's going on here? And for some reason, my right side, I, it's still not the same. It's supposed to be a bruise. So I was like, okay. I don't want that medication. Then on to another medication, which again caused the same problem, hair loss. And I just decided, you know what? I had 22 inches of hair and it was like, it's not that serious. Snip, snip, snip. <laughs> My hairdresser did not want. She was like, I'm like, you want to cut your hair? I'm like, yeah. So she didn't want to do it. So I went home. I was like this, ponies out. And then I came back to her and I was like, hey, now you're going to do my hair, right? <laughs> she was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do something to it. <laughs> All right. So I was like, no problem there. Um, so another thing that I found with this piece is although you're in jail, I felt like I was in jail, there's still a side of it that I could look through and see the rainbow. Um, so that's what you see here is some of the colors. Um, I feel like even though I struggle a lot, definitely in Create Studio has made me being able to talk here and feel comfortable about my condition. Otherwise, I would still be in a shell, you know, depressed because 
I forgot, I felt that my support system wasn't huge enough. Um, and even the doctors trying to talk to them, it's like, hello, I, it's my body, so I know what's happening to me. And regardless of that, these are some of the side effects I'm having. So you really do have to be self-advocate for yourself. Um, so that's what I did. All these pills that you see, um, I would say there's about six or seven of them. Technically, I was taking like 20 or something like that um, for, at different times. And I said there's an interaction with them. Finally, at Albany Med, just recently, spending a week there. That pill is not exciting. Um, spending a week there, they said, you know what? These two medications you're on, there's an interaction between them. So you're really not feeling the effect of it. So they said, you know, we'll start with taking you off of this medication and see how you do. Um, so I was doing fine. They just changed it. And the doctor said, you know what? You're receiving this medication all at once. Um, so to help with your migraines, this will help it. Now, mind you, one, two, three doctors, and nobody can figure that out. I'm like, I have migraines every day once I take this medication. Today I feel pretty good. Um, no Tylenol, anything like that, and I don't drink because of the medication. So that worked out. Albany meant was great and figuring out what is going on and getting me off that medication. So this is Girl Blue, and she's going to kind of tell about my story. Well, I'm really honored to be here with you and doing this. Um, so I was tasked with writing a song about Janice's story um, based on some notes that she sent and the story that you gave me. And um, I actually didn't need much to write it. I was telling you, it just kind of happened very quickly. Um, I was contemplating over some of the notes you sent. And um, for me, what came up pretty quickly was... Um, sort of a theme of self-acceptance. I was thinking about how all of us, you know, have different paces of um, luxury of being able to work towards this self-acceptance, but with your story, it seems that it's sort of like non-negotiable. You're put in a situation where it's like, you just have to accept yourself, and that makes you much stronger. Um, so that's what I was kind of thinking about while I was writing, and... Um, I just wanted to write this for you, not necessarily about you, but give you something that could make you feel strong. I wake up in the middle of a that I don't recognize from a dream I can't remember and I am looking up at people I don't know they're hovering over everybody looks so worried and I know that it's about me and I want to scream, but I don't let it show. Ooh, this is who I am. Ooh, I'm doing the best I But I know I have to let it go And learn to surrender to my body oh, I, I do it all for my babies So each time I have to bear it all 
to some doctor in some hospital I am okay just thinking of them This is who I am Ooh. You don't have to understand What a great start. I don't think I have a mic, Joe, and Joe is running. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Wow, um, there are a lot of moving parts in this night, um, and, uh, and I thank Joe, our tech expert here, for making it all work. Um, what a beautiful start, though. Thank you to Janice and Girl Blue. All right, I'm gonna speak a little bit slowly here while Joe <laughs> resets the stage. Um, so, <laughs> um, so Nora and Joe Esposito are gonna be our next storytellers. Um, they are representing the Huntington's Disease Society of America, the Albany chapter of that. Um, the Huntington's Disease Society is the leading national organization uh, providing help for today and hope for tomorrow for families facing this debilitating disease. Their songwriter is Jim Gaudet. Um, Jim is a well-known voice in the, uh, in the bluegrass world, and he's an Albany native. Uh, he's graced this stage innumerable times, and, uh, and I thank Kelly Scott, who's sitting here right in front of me, um, for connecting us with the organization that she is a, a board member of, and for connecting us with Nora and Joe. When she presented this story to us, she says, I have a love story for you. <laughs> And I thought, that's a great one for true songs. All right, so I'm going to let you guys just, uh, Jim and, and Joe and however you guys want to do this, you know, just filter up to the stage. And uh, Joe will be ready in just a minute. <laughs> Oh. 
grow. We're going to take this side, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Hi. <laughs> All right. I think we're good. Joe, I'll turn it over to you and Nora. Yeah, you have to be pretty close. I'll get pretty close. close. It's okay. That might be our first transfer in front of a crowd. <laughs> right? right? Anyway, hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Joe. This is my wife, Nora. Nora lives with Huntington's disease and has been living with HD for, I don't know, 15 years, something like that. It's been, it's been quite a ride. Um, anyway, I'm her caregiver, husband, high school boyfriend, a little bit of everything. Um, we've, been doing this, <laughs> we've been doing this a long time. And um, we've been participating in HDSA as volunteers, board members, people that enjoy their services, um, and just general helpers for the last 10 years or so. Um, HCSA has provided um, resources for, for research, for learning, for community, and generally it's been, it's been a, a great group of people for us to meet and interact with. What's that? Nora's agreeing with me. <laughs> Um, this song, I think, is mostly about me and Nora, not so much about HTSA, which is going to be fun to listen to, and I'm trying not to read the notes here. <laughs> um, I spill out a lot of the secrets, Joe. Yeah, no, I, I've heard that, so I, I think I'm going to stop and let you go. <laughs> yeah. are, you, are you set? I'm set. Okay, all right. All right. Let's go from there. It's a tough act to follow. <laughs> but I want to just express my gratitude for being here. There's so many different um, levels of thanks that I have for here. I mean, um, being invited by Sarah Craig is, is certainly an honor to begin with, and then to be matched up with Nora and Joe, as I've come to find out, was such another blessing in all of this. I, I loved working on this song, I, and I have to say that from the first time um, that, that Sarah invited me, from that point forth, there's not been a day in my life that I have not touched this song some way. So I just keep working it and working it, and I had, as a matter of fact, Richie, right? I, heard Didn't I, I call Richie today. this afternoon. <laughs> I said, Richie, how about if we do this? Because he keeps thinking that it's complete. Because <laughs> I tell him it's complete. <laughs> There's just a little something that I always want to add, but um, that's right. That also helps, Joel. That also helps. Let me see where we are here. Where's my. Jen. All right. Joe Duo, are you ready for me to pop this in there? Ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> Does it sound good, Joe? Good just, there we go. Okay. We are in business. Just a little bit about the song. I make reference to three of my favorite, well, one of my favorite um, love stories, and that's The Gift of the Magi, a short story by O. Henry. That's one of my all-time favorite stories. And then I bring out um, 
<laughs> Romeo and Juliet, and um, Elizabeth Barrett Browning's uh, Let Me Count the Ways, How Do I Love These. So I referenced those in the chorus just in case you may not be familiar with those. And what else did I want to say? Let me introduce Rich Pergano here with me to help me out. We call him Upstate Richie because there's another Richie Pergano in New York City. So we call this guy, oh, we don't have your regular piano. He's got a sign on there, Upstate. But the real kicker is they have the same birthday. So, Nora, are we ready to go? What do you think? Yeah, no. Rock and roll. Let it happen. <laughs> I don't know. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to be playing a little bit in the beginning of the song, then I'm going to turn it over to Richie because his playing is way more beautiful than what I have to offer. Hey there, Nora. Hey there, Joe. I've been asked to tell a story. You already know. The story has no ending But you have known that from the start It's a tale of love so tender It will melt the coldest heart The gift of the Magi Brownings Let me count ways Romeo and Juliet The price that lovers pay But they're just stories none of which are true no they can't hold a candle the torch it burns for you They say when you know it, you know it. Joe says he knew. Joe says he knew, he knew it. From the very first day. When the illness was confirmed They both knew it was for sure Yeah, they promised one another That their love would be the cure So on the twelfth day of November They bow their love The only way to go Was for them To go Together The gift of the magi 
let me count ways Romeo and Juliet Show us the price that lovers pay So hey there, Joe Could you just tell me this? Yeah, do you remember when first you kissed Nora's lips? Were you sitting on a blanket underneath the summer stars? Or were you curled up? in the back seat of your grandpa's slightly stolen car yeah the gift of the magi brownings let me count ways romeo and juliet Show us the praise the lovers pay. I know I'll never know the answer. And I no longer question why. Since I'm in the presence of an angel. When I look in nor his eyes I'm in the presence of an angel when I look in Nora's eyes Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. You had me by the second line. <laughs> For my next number. No. no. <laughs> Joe, bend your knee, bend your knee, bend your knee, bend your knee. Bend your knee. No, nope, that's not bending your knee. Bend your knee. Bend your knee. Hey, yeah, no. Hey, yeah, no. Yeah, just lock yourself up. Oh, bend you. They're tights. There's a door that goes there. <laughs> Oh, you guys. <laughs> well done. All right. Um, so onward. Uh, Mariah Velvis is representing Down Syndrome Aim High Resource Center. And that organization offers support programs and educational services, social events, community events, and um, plenty of up-to-date information, research uh, for people with Down syndrome and their families. 
And Mariah's song is going to be performed by her good friend. Yeah, there you are. Come on up. <laughs> by her good friend, Kate McDonald. Um, who has toured nationally with her band and on her own, and uh, she is a regular headliner on this stage. Uh, this is Mariah. Kate, come on up. All right. So let's give them a warm welcome to the stage. Thank you. So we're, we're um, did you want us to use this mic or her use that mic? Yeah, I can use the one uh, the this one? Uh, which one does she have? That's, that's what I'm asking. No, the one that you're using is for you. The other one is for her. Oh, OK. All right, thank you. Here you go, Mariah. Here you go. Come on over here, girlfriend. Right here, right here. Oh, man. Yep. I'm going to get behind you after I play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, Dad. Oh. Good. Is that good? Yes. Hi. Hi. How are you tonight? Okay, um, I have a speech about myself. Um, I can start right now. Um, good, uh, <clears throat> good evening, Carolina. <laughs> and I can start now. There you go. <clears throat> That's Um, I am, <clears throat> <excuse me. clears throat> I am Mariah Favis. I was invited to be a part of, of tonight's program by my friend, be my, my, be my friend, Kate McDonald. Kate has been friends with my family since I was in middle school. We had shared many special music nights together. I love to hear Kate and sing and play guitar. My favorite song is Don't Mess My, with My House. <laughs> Kate asked me, how are you different? Well, you might know this, but I have a, uh, but I have a person with Down syndrome. I was born with a extra piece on my 21st chromosome. It was also born with a big hole in my heart that I had to fix when I was uh, just I was a little baby. So I was born a little different that uh, than than my twins twin brother. I have three brothers. They all treat me like any other who's with a sister. <clears throat> when I went to school, I stayed in the classroom with all the other kids.
my I, I got a um sorry um other kids uh, I got extra help for to one how to read and write math is was difficult for me and still is. My favorite subject was history, and it, it still is. <laughs> I even traveled to London to, to do report on the mummies at the British Museum. How about that? <laughs> Now I have a team mix so I get the help I need to do everything I want to do in my life. At our team meeting, I tell them what I want to do. I have help from my staff, Seven. Who helps me to to meet my goals? For for example, I ha I am good taking pictures, so Sharon helps me to get to to get me a volunteer job at Pine Hollow Auditorium taking pieces, work for them on new candle. And even one fourth pass um, for the, <laughs> uh, for at the Art uh, Elmont Fair with my gold pieces. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah. I want to be an advocate talking to you and organizing things for, for people with Down syndrome is I want work to, work to do. I want to, I went, I went to, to many classes. And conferences and body works organized by Down since them. M. High was a center. I won't have, no, wait, I won't about being proud of who I am. I have a job and I have my team. In my family, I also have boyfriend. <laughs> my team, no wait, my team. I work to dress up. I hear shoes. I hear it makes me feel like a woman. I want to be liked and respected and get this. I live, uh, I live my own, uh, own, in my own house. <laughs> and, and don't mess with my house. I want to be, I want to tell, I want to tell you 
I am more work than different. I love music and who and I am thinking about that all of you love music too. Because that because that is why you here tonight. So let's celebrate in being more like than different. Enjoy my <coughs> Different and joy, like enjoy my what my friend amazing friend going to sing. And pray uh, to going to pray and sing. Give your keyboard on it. just cry now or should I wait? <laughs> so we had a nice um, long interview, um, Mariah and her mother Marietta and me, and um, we ate stale cookies at my house. <laughs> and, um, and she just was fabulous. She just shared so much information with me about things that I didn't know. I've known her for a long time, but I there are things that I never thought to ask her before until I say, well, I'm going to write a song, so let's get some other details. So um, I'm not looking down at the lyrics while I look down. I'm looking at, yeah. So um, here we go. It's called Not Broken. Some people look at me funny Some don't look at me at all They call me sweetheart, shorty and funny When I'm shopping at the mall Okay, I'm a little bit different But why waste your time asking why? That I'm broken and don't fix me don't even try cause broken is a busted mirror broken is a dog on a chain broken's a clock that stops ticking broken's alone in the rain a home, a job, friends, and family. My life is better than most. I got my team when I need them. They help with the stuff that I don't know. My smile is as wide as the sunrise. I love to dress up in high heels. And I'm not afraid of the spotlight Or to speak up for what I feel Cause broken is a busted mirror Broken's a dog on a chain
Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whoops, I'm gonna grab this one. Joe, are you still there? Can I do this? Check, check, yeah. Well, you know, Mariah, we like music. Yes, we do, we all do. And I mean, geez, this is really, um, this is beautiful. It's like you, we hear people's stories in the newspaper. We help hear people's stories maybe at City Hall. We talk about problems at church. We talk about problems in different ways and challenges. Um, and then when you put a melody to it, and you capture the essence of it, it somehow opens your heart to it in a different way. And that's a, a really powerful thing. So we're gonna have one more story uh, before we take a break, then we're gonna give you a chance to stretch your legs and then we have three more after that. So uh, this next one, um, William Douglas represents the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation's Second Chances Program. <laughs> well represented in the audience tonight. Um, the foundation's mission is to ensure that retired racehorses are spared from abuse and neglect and slaughter, which is the fate of an ungodly number of retired racehorses um, when they stop running. The Second Chances program sends horses to prison where they're cared for by inmates who are given a high level of training in equine care. So William's songwriter is Mark Tolstrup, um, who's been inducted into the New York State Blues Hall of Fame, and he's gonna be representing the Capital Region at the International Blues Challenge down in Memphis in January. So this is a dream team. Would you please welcome them to the stage, William and Mark. Hello. Oh, okay. My story begins about 10 years ago when I was um, drinking, drugging, getting into trouble. Um, I ended up with sales and I ended up in prison. Um, when I went to prison, I had, uh, I had to do four years for a sale of the cocaine. Um, I, I did two years, two years in a medium prison, then they sent me to Watt Hill Correctional Facility. Um, after, when I got to Watt Hill, I found out they had an equine uh, program. Well, I always, I'm an animal lover, so that's, that's what I ended up doing. I ended up getting outside clearance and uh, went to, um, into the equine program. Um, I see here. Um, I uh, when I first got into this program, I um, I, I was kind of scared of the horses because I'm used to like smaller horses. These these uh, thoroughbreds were pretty big, <laughs> just to say the least. Um, when I when I when I started uh, when I started into the program, I. Um, I had a field of like 12 horses I had to deal with and take care of. Um, I, it was probably eight people in the program, eight, eight to 10 people in the program and we had like 48 horses to care for. Um, my, my field had one horse in particular that I, I had to deal with and his name was Energy Flow, nicknamed Boodles. Um, he wasn't neglected when, uh, when, they, when he got there, and he was like skittish and scared of everybody. It took me probably a month to probably get him close to me where I can deal with him. But I, when, I, when he dealt with me, he, he followed me all over the field once me and him clicked. Um, I used to have to take care of all of these horses, um, had to uh, groom them. Uh, I ended up doing two years in the program, and I ended up completing it. Um, 
from there. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm nervous here. <laughs> I'm, yeah, man. Uh, well, when I first started into the program, I, these horses intimidated me. My, my instructor would say to me, he says, uh, why are you scared of the horses? The horses feel and sense that you're scared of them, so then they want to know why you're scared. So I'm like, uh, the horses mirror, I never knew, the horses mirror what you put out to them. Um, so if you feel scared, they look around want to know why you're scared. And once I, once I got that, the horses would follow me after that. I had no problem with them. Um, I, I dealt with, see, I used to go from the field to field, um, taking care of them, feeding them, uh, watering them, uh, grooming them. Um, a lot of times I would get, get done my field, I'd go to all the fields. I, I used to go down to the old man's fields. Um, that's where um, um, Quick Call was. Quick Call was a good horse. He, he, he was awesome. Uh, he, was, uh, <laughs> he, he, he was the alpha of his little field. Um, he's, he used to follow me all around and nudge the other horses away. He's like, no, he's with me. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know, so uh, I, yeah, I felt bad when he passed. Um, so I went down to the funeral down here in Saratoga for him. Um, I, I don't know what else to say here. Um, other than a Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation has been awesome to me. And I've been trying to do what I can to help out the foundation. So that's, that's where I'm at. <laughs> This is such a great thing. I'm so happy to be part of this. Thank you, Sarah, for inviting me and for everybody that's involved with this. There's so many great causes, so many great uh, different life stories that are out here. I have always believed in songs about real life. And whether that's harsh and sad or happy and joyous, I'm, I'm down with all of it. That's, that's life. And so I was really struck by uh, the whole concept of these men in prison and these horses that were kind of discarded. And... Um, Talked to William, got some of his story. I got a um, little insight. Some of these lines came from him, so if we do uh, get this recorded by a big star somewhere, we got to split some royalty money. But, anyway. <laughs> but he talked about this one horse, the old man, and uh, that sort of kind of gave me a little start to the song. And then he also talked about the, how, the whole idea, of, well, he said already, how the horses mirror what you're feeling back at you. That was a line that kind of ended up in the song. And, and you said at one of the first conversations we had that you didn't think the same afterwards. No, you don't think the same. And that's a really interesting idea. You don't think the same.
come up to him, he better go so easy. Come up to him, you better go so slow.
Okay, everybody, we're ready to get going again. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Yay, that's the way to do it. A little applause. All right. So, amazingly brave storytellers, uh, such courage, amazingly great listening listeners that are songwriters. Uh, just beautiful work, everybody. I appreciate it so much. Um, and before we start this second set, uh, I want to offer a few thank yous. And the first one goes out to Finger Paint Philanthropy. Um, yeah. They, they made a nice donation, a significant donation toward covering the expenses. So each one of the nonprofits participating is getting a $500 donation. And um, all of the storytellers and the songwriters get a little stipend. And uh, we believe in paying artists for their work here at Cafe Lena. And we thank Finger Pink for making that possible. Um, I also want to thank, there you are, Bob Vogel. <laughs> He was uh, project managing this event just as a volunteer. And uh, there are a lot of moving parts, as you can tell. And he kept the parts moving. And that was great. And I want to thank the staff of the nonprofits, uh, not just for their participation in what is happening here tonight, but for the work that they do day in and day out um, to create success in our community and to create healthy whole communities. So thank you to them. Okay, Marcy Rivette represents Wilton Wildlife Preserve and Park, and that is <laughs> that's a 2,400-acre par uh, parcel of land um, that is preserved for the health of the ecosystem and also to provide environmental education and just recreational opportunities for our area. Um, her song is going to be performed by our farthest traveling songwriter, and that is Lorne Clark. He's a Canadian, but he's living in Pennsylvania, so he came here today from Pennsylvania, um, and he has been performing and producing music since the 1970s, and he is just a, a wonderful man. So please welcome Marcy and Lorne. So my name is Marcy, and my story is about finding my way, finding my health again, and it's also about things coming full circle. And when I heard Mariah talk about her story, it reminded me of what I do now, which I work as an attendant for special needs kids in the Shenandoah school system, and three of my students have Down syndrome. And they teach me something new every single day. So it's amazing how things work out. Well, I'm here to tell you the story. I have to cheat because I can't remember all this. <laughs> of my journey to a healthier and better life. But this story doesn't just involve me. It involves my whole family and an ever-growing circle of friends who make my life so much richer and fuller. Around 10 years ago, I was floundering in my life. I was very overweight and out of shape and trying to deal with a childhood trauma that I wasn't able to get over. Then one day, my life started to change. I was working as a reporter for a local paper and did an interview with Margo Olson, woohoo, the director of Wilton Wildlife Preserve. I had so much fun that day learning all about the preserve and their efforts in conservation and the preservation of the corner blue butterfly. I quickly realized I wanted to get involved as a volunteer, so my journey began. I talked with my adult son, who was autistic, and my brother, who has PTSD, and they both live with me. We decided to become trail stewards. My father was in the Department of Environmental Conservation and taught us about conservation our entire lives. This seemed to be the perfect way to get back to our roots and actually make a difference. It was also a way to exercise our dog, Lucky, who loved the woods and came along with us on all our adventures. 
I remember so vividly the first time I tried to walk the 5K trail at Camp Saratoga. I wasn't able to finish the whole trail and had to stop several times because I was so out of breath. But within a couple of months, I was able to walk the whole trail without stopping. What a triumph that was. I also remember vi vividly the first time I met Larry Gordon. At that point, we were visiting the trails several days a week and learning how to do trail maintenance. One day, we were coming back to the parking lot, and this man was sitting in his truck with his dog, and he said, oh, who are you? I, I told him who we, we were the new trail stewards. He just said, oh, and drove off. <laughs> Larry Gordon was a well-known figure at Wilton Wildlife Preserve and was largely responsible for the preservation efforts of the Carner butterfly and also quite a character. We met several times in the parking lot and he never said much, but one day he told us that there was a tree branch lying across the blue trail and could we see if we could remove it. That was when I knew he had accepted us. <laughs> when I thought about telling my story here, there were so many memories that came to mind. There was this footbridge that crossed Delagon Stream on the Blue Trail. A beaver decided to make this his new home, and my son and I spent a whole summer battling that little guy. <laughs> Every day, we would go down to the bridge and pull out all the sticks that he had jammed under it, and the next day, there were even more there. <laughs> that same bridge was where my older son proposed to his now wife. We were hiking there one day as a family, and he got and we got to the bridge, and he suddenly got down on one knee. What a perfect place. I also remember the hush of the forest, except the swishing of our snowshoes after a snowfall, racing up a hill on an early autumn night to watch the rising of the harvest moon, coming across a mama porcupine and her baby strolling down the trail like they were taking a hike themselves, <laughs> and seeing a water snake jump out of the pond and landing on the dock right in front of me. That was fun. <laughs> Over the years, my family and I did so many things and loved every second of it. We did whatever we could. We picked lupine seeds, stuffed envelopes, cleared endless trails after storms, and helped out at special events. But although I had started losing weight, my eyesight started deteriorating, and I was gradually getting worse. After a health crisis, I found out I was diabetic and was losing my eyesight due to cataracts. This was my final wake up that I needed to really change my life and get my health back. I got cataract surgery after being legally blind and now have 20 20 eyesight. I have lost more pounds than I care to admit and completely off insulin and working on getting off Genuvia. But in spite of all my health struggles, I will never be able to put into words what it's been like being involved with Wilton Wildlife Preserve all these years. The joy I feel every time I go out on the trails never goes away. Even when we're cleaning up after a bad storm or rescuing a newborn snapping turtle that lost its way back to the pond. We lost our lucky this past May and now have two new dogs, Copper and Penny, to join us on our adventures, although since we moved to Clifton Park, those adventures are fewer and farther in between. However, I promise Margo, as soon as I retire from Shenandoah Hole, I'll be right back walking those trails every day and chasing butterflies. <laughs> so, Lauren's gonna tell my story. <laughs> well, I, uh, when, when I was introduced to Marcy and her story, um, it kind of hit me in a different direction. Uh, it's a very positive story and it, it, I think very uplifting. Um, those of you that might know my music, uh, that's a different approach for me. <laughs> I, have, uh, I, I have a death toll to maintain in my songs. <laughs> but, but in any case, uh, I have also recently gone through uh, some serious uh, health issues. I was um, uh, 
a year ago, in March of 2020, I was paralyzed and, uh, from an infection. And it took me, well, I'm still doing the therapy exercises now. But as you can see, I'm up and standing. And, thank you. But it's, it's an echo of what Marcy talked about in her story. She went out there to the wildlife preserve, and it inspired her to get moving and get put, you know, just keep in the effort. And not like gym nuts that, you know, spend all their energy and money buying gym equipment and going to gyms and lifting heavy things and putting them back down, <laughs> but just to get out into the outdoors in a place like a, a peaceful wildlife preserve that you have available to you here. It's just a, it's a wonderful opportunity and I encourage everyone to walk. So. Yep, me too. So this is my take on the, on the theme of the story. It's called Out on the Trail. Life is never easy At times we all can feel just a little bit lost Locked down with our troubles and Haunted by the ticking of the clock Dreaming there might come a day When we can finally break away Find ourselves a little peace of mind Out on the trail time she went out there She couldn't even make it to the top She sat down in that forest And listened to the beating of her heart Resting in that silent glade She realized she'd found she found herself a little peace of mind Out on the trails Took her family with her Took her family with her Hiking with her brother and her son For the first time in a long time They found they could enjoy a bit of fun like all the best things in life you find You start with one step at a time She found themselves a little peace of mind Out on the trail Out on the trail it all makes sense You can take control of your life again there's one recipe that never fails Getting out on the trail Out on the trail Life is never easy Times we all can feel just a little bit lost 
Locked down with our troubles Haunted by the ticking of the clock Dreaming there might come a day When we will finally break away Find ourselves that little peace of mind Out on the trail Thank you. That was wonderful. <laughs> um, Joe, do you need to reset for the next folks? And that tells me it's a yes. All right. <laughs> I, I am going to really pay the price of what I'm doing to Joe tonight. <laughs> Joe and I have been working together here for 26 years. So. <laughs> And, and he's been here for about 75 before that. <laughs> Great. So, Kimberly, why don't you come on up? All right. Great. Okay. So, um, just going to go slow here. Um, Kimberly uh, Vall is representing To Love a Child. Um, and that's an organization that she's worked with since she was a young teenager in Haiti. Um, to Love a Child provides humanitarian assistance to impoverished children and their families in Zimbabwe and Haiti uh, to help create a better future and a better quality of life for all. So her songwriter is Thomasina Winslow, who's a second generation Cafe Lena performer. Um, her blues and gospel music can be heard up and down the East Coast on the airwaves and on live stages. And she is very comfortable up here. And Kimberly and Thomasina, let's give them a big warm welcome. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, good evening. I think I'm going to take the microphone. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Kimberly Val, and I am Haitian. Like um, you just heard, um, it, it, is, uh, it has been a long time ago. It is in 2017. I was a young little girl when I met um, to love a child. So I have a dream. I would like to be a nurse or a doctor. So, but um, since I was born, I did not know my father. He already died. So it was only my mother. So I, I was little, but I already knew that she won't be able to afford college for me. So, Fortunately, I met those wonderful people, so they helped me um, realize this dream. So now I'm a nurse. Um, <laughs> um, uh, this story is not only for me, because they have a lot of people in my country. Fortunately, it's um, only me, because last year I... I I, I have to come here. I moved 
now I'm living in Boston, so I, I left Haiti one year ago. So, but I know there is a lot of people in my country, like, um, I know there is, they built a lot of school in Haiti. There is like five sites where they, they have school. Uh, each school, they, they have like more than 500 children. So they pay teacher every month. They have to send money back there to pay teacher every month. They have clinic. Uh, there is some nurse who work back there to take care of people. And there is some places too, people, they don't really have um, purified water. So they put um, a system to, to, to help those people. So they had made a lot of beautiful work back there. So it is an honor for me to be the representative for this um, organization because they, are, they made a lot of things for us. So I would like to thank them. There is Cindy and her husband. They, they are the director of the, this organization and they have their friends here too. I would like to thank Ms. Tomasinto who's gonna tell you more about my story. So, Ms. Kimberly was very patient with me. I said, I, do you like, uh, Compass, which is Haitian pop, and she says, yes, I like Compass. And I said, me and my big mouth. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> but I'm very grateful that she helped me by approving, she approves of this message. <laughs> can tell you about me I just want to be a healer it heals my soul to see the people set free I just want to be a healer I know my path would take me this way on the path to be a healer but letting the people know what I have to say I just want to be a healer See, I've seen healing every day From nurses and doctors and people who pray I know my path is leading this way I just want to be a healer I know the people had so much to say I just want to be a healer I couldn't let a thing like language stand in the way I just want to be a healer And even after that bell has been rung I just want to be a healer There's so much wisdom in all native tongues Mais je voulais young guérisseur See, I've seen healing every way Nurses and doctors and mothers who pray I know my path is leading this way Mais je voulais young guérisseur Hard work to cook, serve, and each day repeat. I just want to be a healer. It does me such good to see the hungry eat. Mais je voulais young guérisseur. To love a child is to love the world. I just want to be a healer. Protecting the souls of all the boys and girls. 
Mais je voulais un guérisseur See I've seen healing in every way Nurses and doctors and mothers who pray I know my path is leading this way Mais je voulais un guérisseur Mais je voulais un guérisseur Mais je voulais un guérisseur Oh, that song's a keeper. Cindy, you're going you're gonna to use that one. <laughs> Great. Um, beautiful. So uh, before I introduce our final performer uh, for the night, I just want to reinforce that um, we're really on a mission to capture people's stories here. And that has really been the case since the place opened in 1960. But folk music is all about the people's stories. And, uh, and we, in recent years, have started to do more than just musical performances to do that. And this is kind of a hybrid that shows some of that new work, that new direction. Um, another initiative that we're uh, starting in December is called The Art of Community. And it's um, going to be just almost like a live podcast that's going to happen here on the first Tuesday of every month. Um, from four to five in the afternoon, just come over at the end of your work day. And it's gonna be an, just a quick half hour on stage interview with uh, an executive director or a senior staff member of a nonprofit. Not so much about exactly what their mission is or their work is, but what inspires them, what keeps them going, what keeps them um, in the game, because it's hard work. And, uh, and these issues, like this is a very beautiful moment that we're having here tonight, but you know, there are times when you run out of money for a program that you desperately know is needed. There's times when you try something and it fails, or there are needs that you can see that you can't address. It's, it's emotional work. And, um, and so I want to understand better what makes people tick, and I want to be able to share their inspiration with the rest of the community. So we're going to do uh, that half hour conversation and then just a half hour hangout here. Feel free to bring, co we'll probably give coffee away, but bring a sandwich, you know, bring a slice of pizza, bring an extra slice of pizza. Um, so, uh, yeah, everybody is welcome to that. Um, if you're interested in the nonprofit sector, please keep that in mind. It's going to be the first Tuesday of every month, four to five. So, Katie Quinn. Um, <laughs> Katie Quinn has a lot of fans and could probably sell out the place herself. Katie Quinn represents the Charlton School in Burnt Hills. Um, Charlton is a therapeutic learning community for girls that helps its students feel safe, connected, and empowered. Um, Katie worked on her story with storyteller Beth Novick, uh, who will be performing here in January, actually, as a storyteller. Yes. Um, Katie wrote her own song in collaboration with Jess Hudak. Um, Jess is a sensational songwriter who got her start right here in this room as a young teenager and then she headed out to Los Angeles where she found major commercial success in television and on live stages and um, Matthew Vitti is also going to be using the drum kit that you've been waiting all night to hear. <laughs> so please welcome Katie, Jess and Matthew. Hi everyone, my name is Katie Quinn. I'm a junior in high school, oh hi, with a 99% average. 
I'm in the select choir. I play a variety of sports. I write poetry. I play the bass guitar. I skateboard. And on top of all of this, I find time to set aside for weekly therapy sessions. But to get here, to where I am now, I endured a lot of pain, sadness, and misery. If you would have known the person I was two years ago, even six months ago, you'd know that I'm nowhere near the person I was before. As a kid, I deeply struggled to understand my emotions, as well as understand how to cope with them. My lack of understanding caused me to have outbursts that lasted for hours, extreme moments of rage, even long periods of isolation, which would cause me to lock myself in my room and not want to see anyone. To me, it was more than hearing the answer no or not getting what I wanted when I wanted it. I behaved the way that I did for a reason. There were things in my past that really managed to hurt me, and I felt very damaged as a result. Knowing this, I chose to act out. I'd yell, scream, destroy property, and hurt myself and others. As a 10-year-old girl at the time, it was not only scary for me to see what was going on, but for my family to see it as well. I was traumatized and had no idea how to handle my life at that time. At some point in time, my family had come to the realization that they couldn't give me the support that I needed inside the home. In order to make sure that I got the help I needed and keep everyone safe back at home, they sent me to a therapeutic boarding school in Asheville, North Carolina. Looking back, I remember how alone I felt, how scary it was to be away from home. Sorry. how scary it was to be away from home at such a young age, but I also remember why it needed to be done. I attended Academy for exactly a year. During that time, I learned many things and met a lot of different people, many of which had extremely similar experiences to me. Being so young, I tried my best to soak up everything that they were teaching me and learn to be aware of what I was feeling. After a year of being separated from my family back home in Long Island, I got the opportunity to graduate from the program. Heading off with all the tools and skills I learned there, I began my journey back home and started a new school. For sixth, seventh, and a small portion of eighth grade year, I attended a private Catholic school. At first, I struggled, but after a few months, I began to make tons of friends, get nearly perfect grades, and find my, my place in the school community. Things were going well at school, but home was still a struggle. While I was still angry and confused, I began to feel extreme sadness. My self-esteem was non-existent. I started to injure myself constantly, and the sadness began to slowly take over my life. Looking back, I don't know if anyone really knew that I was sad. My emotions always seemed to come out in the form of anger, making me seem selfish and conceited, when in reality, I cared about everyone else 10 times more than I did about myself. The end of seventh grade year was pretty much the straw that broke the camel's back. After multiple hospital visits, continuous challenges back at home, and newfound struggles at school, so began another journey to find me, yet again, a new school that would fit my needs, Harmony Heights. I became a day student at Harmony Heights in January of 2018, and long story short, I absolutely hated it. I hated the kids, I hated the staff, and I hated the environment as a whole. I hated feeling like I constantly needed to be fixed. After a month or so, things at home were still chaotic. My self-harm was getting worse and I had no will to live. So in February of that year, I got switched to the residential program. To say that I was upset is a complete understatement. I was broken. I just wanted to be home. I just wanted to feel needed. And most of all, I just wanted to be normal. Exactly a month after I attended Harmony Heights for the first time, I went home and overdosed. I was so done with my, what my life became, and I felt like there was no point to fight anymore. I was all alone, and in all honesty, I felt like I was eating, fighting my demons all by myself. After two weeks in the hospital, I returned back to Harmony. Those 14 days gave me some much needed time to think about what I really wanted for myself, if I wanted to have a future or if I wanted to just give up. Over the next two years, I tried to use the tools the school had given me. Taking advantage of therapy and great friendships, I really began to find myself in a place where I felt I'd never belong. Of course, things weren't perfect. There were many bumps in the road. However, things were slowly getting better back at home. Just as I was starting to heal and truly figure out why I was feeling the things I was feeling, COVID-19 came along and I was sent back home. 
I remember being so ecstatic that I didn't have to go to school, so glad that I could be in my own home and eat my, own, and eat my family's food for more than two days at a time. However, after some time, I realized that home was definitely not the ideal place for me. I was not ready to be home, although I may have thought that I was. All the things that I had worked so hard to change slowly came creeping back into my life. Life at home during COVID, excuse my language, was complete hell, as I'm pretty sure it was for a lot of people in this room and the world in general. Days for me consisted of boredom, unstructured time, and isolation, which then turned into moments of sadness, anger, and disappointment. With the constant influence of social media on my life and not being able to leave my home, I began to resort to behaviors that were not good for me, such as self-harming, purging, over-exercising, and smoking. I felt like I had no control over my life and I hated the person on the other side of the mirror. By the time school had started back up again in September, my family was not seeing any changes in me and I was not seeing any changes in myself. That's when, yet again, we began to look for another place that would truly help me be the best version of myself that I could be. So came about a place called the Charlton School in Burnt Hills. I began attending Charlton in September of 2020. To say the least, I was completely despondent and utterly depressed. I felt like it was the same thing all over again, a continuous cycle of trial and error. My first six months at Charlton were not all cupcakes and rainbows, more like licorice and thunderstorms. <laughs> I couldn't accept the fact that at some point I needed to change all of the parts of myself that were not beneficial to me, my life, and my family. During those six months, I spent many nights in the hospital, attempted suicide multiple times, and tried my hardest to run away from what my life had become. It was impossible for me to accept my reality, to truly understand that I wasn't going home until I could create a home within myself. One day in the winter of that same year, my family came up for a family therapy session. This session was the thing that changed my perspective on what I truly wanted for myself and what I wanted for my life in general. During that hour, my older sister Megan took out her phone and began to read something that she had written on the drive up. Katie, if you can't change and continue to do what you've been doing for years, I cannot have you in my life anymore. That's what she said. I could feel my heart pulsating and my entire body began to shake. This moment was an epiphany for me. I had been wearing a pair of foggy glasses for so long that I couldn't see what was going on around me. I needed to start taking responsibility for the role that I had played in everything that had happened. For so long, I blamed everyone else, not admitting the fact that I was partly to blame. A ton of thoughts ran through my head, and right there, right then, I realized that I truly needed to start making a difference in my life. Now, things haven't been perfect since then, but things have gotten so much better, better than I ever thought possible. At first, I focused too much on wanting to get out of Charlton and wanting to go home, that I lost sight of what I truly wanted, a stable home environment and a sense of appreciation and hope within myself. Since then, I've been working tirelessly to heal wounds within my family dynamic, use the opportunities that I receive at Charlton to improve great areas of my life and learn to love myself for who I am. With the help of amazing staff, who a few of them came today, so I'm really, like, really grateful that they all came. Um, with the help of amazing staff, incredible friends, and my extremely supportive family, who's also here tonight, I am proud to say that I have begun my journey towards healing. It hasn't been easy. It won't be easy. However, I know that all of this will help me to be a stronger woman in the end. Looking back, I realized that all the pain and all the suffering was worth it. It has made me brave, it has made me courageous, and most importantly, it has made me indestructible. Just like a phoenix, I decide to rise up. To those struggling with mental health and challenges within themselves, you are not alone. Don't be afraid to admit you need help, and don't be afraid to challenge yourself. Life has endless opportunities waiting for you. Thank you so much for listening to my story, and I hope that I can be proof that no matter what you go through or what you endure, things can and will get better. I'm just glad it's the last song because I don't think I can cry anymore. I'm done crying tonight. That was crazy. Um, Katie asked me to say something. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting when you're tasked with writing a song about pain and somebody else's pain because in a way you have to be like, 
okay, great, we have limited time, so let's see, what's a metaphor for that? Um, but in a way, I think it is healing, because in a way it gives you power over your pain, because you're not wallowing in it, you're like, you're identifying it, you're turning it into poetry, and I was blown away by Katie, one of the most natural vocalists and performers, and so easy to work with and write with, and clearly can move a room, so. You, you ready to do it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You want to tell them the name of the song? Oh, it's called Baby Bird. <laughs> Baby bird, they left you in the sky With a broken wing and a broken heart Another world Miles and miles away A cold, dark place But the sun still shines And the baby bird Still wants to learn how to fly All is forgiven Now someone gets Bring me down. No, you're not gonna bring me down. Baby bird is a phoenix now. Candles burn, fire lights the way. As I crawl my way out of the dark, a new set of the scars once were a rise above this world oh but the sun still shines and the baby bird still wants to learn how to fly all is forgiven now someone gets That was pure magic. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to everybody who stood on this stage tonight and to all of you in the room and for all the good work that you did. Thank you. <laughs>